Hey everyone, you're watching another TLDR video covering the live letter. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the healer changes. Now, starting off, you guys had a few pretty interesting changes overall that actually made gameplay seem a lot more intriguing, especially to those of you that are like me who actually really didn't want to play a healer in this game, only because you got so used to mouse overs and stuff from World of Warcraft that playing a healer in this game felt a little bit odd, but after seeing some of these changes, I'm, I'm really interested in possibly working on some of my healers for next expansion. Now, the biggest change is that uh, you guys are going to be getting uh, more single target buffs, which is going to be huge in order to increase your party's damage, you know, aid more people in battle. You're also going to be getting reduced cast times for offensive spells, so your DPS is going to increase a little bit there, as well as being able to kill a lot more mobs in open world content a little bit faster. Now, the other thing is your limit break, which if a lot of you have ever felt that frustration of using your limit break to res the raid and trying for a last stitch of hope to get everyone back alive and kill that boss, and you see a couple dead bodies that got left on the field, well, that's because it never had really a huge range to begin with, where now they're going to expand that range to 50 meters. So hopefully you'll be able to res everybody on that platform and get back up and going. So these changes overall actually make it feel like you're going to be doing a little bit more damage, providing more support, and you know just a lot of quality of life things in general that are going to bring a lot of the healer gameplay uh, to the forefront of the battle. Starting off, let's talk about the White Mage, which since they are already so strong to begin with, they're really not doing a whole bunch with them. You know, one of the major changes they noted was a visual change to your restorative field, your little area on the ground there. To make it more notable, you're going to be gaining a little bit more mobility. They haven't really talked about exactly how, but they were mentioning stuff about being a little bit more mobile on that healer. Your old fluid aura ability is actually going to be going away because it's really not needed anyway. And then your divine venison, which is your single target shielding ability, is actually going to be a charge ability. So you're going to be able to gain charges of that. Um, probably a two stack, I would assume, and then be able to use that on allies. Now, this is probably going to play into that needing to shield people before a mechanic hits, especially when it comes to higher end raid content. So overall, not really a huge amount of changes for the White Mage, but just a couple minor tweaks here and there. Next up, we have the Astro, which we kind of already saw a few of these changes coming, just because we knew that that would end up becoming more of a throughput healer rather than having that ability to toggle both through its sort of dineural and nocturnal abilities. So speaking of those, they are going to be removed from the game, but your base healing abilities will be adjusted to sort of the same values as if you did have a dineural buff with that hot effect. So everything's going to get moved up a little bit. You're going to get more throughput in that regard. You're also going to gain a couple new extra things like uh, divination will uh, be changed actually to allow for the seals to be used as a personal buff for yourself, which is actually going to be a really neat thing rather than giving everyone all the fun, you know, now you actually get to have some too. So that's pretty great overall. And they did mention that you're going to be gaining some new AoE abilities to allow for both healing and offensive capabilities. So similar possibly to the way that the White Mage had an ability that did healing, damage, and restored MP, they're simply going to give you something to sort of compensate in that regard as well. Next up on the list is the Scholar, and they really haven't seen a ton of changes, but the changes they have seen are actually pretty strong. And it makes me wonder, are you really going to want one in your raid group? Because it leads me to believe that some mechanics are going to be a little bit more hectic, considering the Scholar is now actually getting a raid-wide movement speed buff. And that's something interesting, because we haven't really seen that with a lot of classes, so... Is it going to be something to where maybe sprint might be down so you want them to be able to save people or you're going to coordinate it to where people can hold sprint for other times? I mean, it's going to be pretty interesting to see that the scholar is going to have this ability, which means that is that going to take place of your shield healer position over the new sage class? So that is something that's actually really interesting and something new that we haven't seen before within the game. And they're also going to gain an additional very powerful single target buff to a party member. So overall, you're going to be able to gain a lot of things on the Scholar, even though there's only those little minor changes. It's actually going to make the class feel really powerful indeed, and it could actually compete 
with that new Sage class. And finally, the brand new Sage class, which we knew that this was going to be sort of the king barrier class of the game, but with those scholar changes, it kind of makes me wonder. But the unique thing that I do like about Sage is it actually almost mimics a Disc Priest in WoW. It is going to have tons of barrier abilities, and it's actually going to be able to heal and do damage simultaneously, which is actually going to be awesome. It reminds me just like Atonement Healing in WoW, and I really want to get my hands on the class to be able to see exactly how much throughput that that healing can produce, as well as what the shields are going to look like. Now, it may mean that, you know, Scholar and Sage end up on a competitive level overall, but I think a lot of people are really eager to try out the new class and will probably lean a bit more towards the Sage for that reason. But does that mean that since it can heal and damage simultaneously, that the Sage is actually going to become the new top dog when it comes to DPS for healers? And that's the conclusion to our TLDR guide for the healers, guys. I think there's a lot of interesting changes in this job category specifically compared to a lot of the other ones that I'm really interested in seeing how it plays in the game. But if there's anything you guys noticed that I may have missed, feel free to leave a comment down below. And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.